Good evening. Today we're going to be looking at Pal World. I'd like to point out that as of writing this script, I currently have 13.6 hours in Pal World about the game January 19th, and I've played it every day until today, which as of writing the script, again, today is January 22nd. Uh, but as of recording this dub, it's currently January 23rd, and I've played the game for maybe another... It's been a, I played it for at least four hours, probably more than that. I'll have to check my time on screen here whenever I'm adding the time out of no date time, whatever. Now, before we get into Power World itself, I do want to talk about the developer, but if you don't care about that and just want to hear what I have to say about Power World, there will be a timestamp on screen now and a timestamp in the description to skip to this part of the video if you want to skip over uh, this intro part because I will be talking about the other games that this developer has made and just a little bit of insight into that. Now, the developer of Power World Pocket Pair have a few games under their belt, but none I've ever played before, although one of the games I have heard of and at one point was thinking uh, about buying the game, that being Craftopia. But before we talk about Craftopia, let's talk about their two other games. First, let's take a look at their first game, Over Dungeon. Their review percentage uh, sits at about 80% on Steam, ranging from mostly to very positive. The description of the game, completely new style, real-time card battle, Over Dungeon. Over Dungeon combines roguelike tower defense and card games. More than 100 cards are attack, animal, building, spell, trap, etc. Build your creative and crazy deck. So the game is basically a card building game. I, I want to say that it's kind of similar to like maybe Hearthstone, but looking at the gameplay, not really. I also haven't played Hearthstone and I don't play uh, deck building games or card games like this, so I don't really have anything else to say about it. Reading the top review makes the game seem, well, at most mid, but I couldn't call it a scam or a bad game. The person says it's like Slay the Spire except you fill the board with chickens and bears and cats and stuff, and then the enemy fills their side of the board with chickens and bears and cats and stuff. So then you have to make towers to shoot at them while all your chickens and bears and cats and stuff fight. STS has that slow, cool, calculating, arrhythmic thing. In this game, you just throw everything at the board with a general strategy. I assume the challenge is yet to come because two hours in, I didn't find any yet. But the graphics and soundtrack are wonderful, and, I definitely, and I'm definitely looking forward to finding the time to play more. Edit. So this has been the game uh, that keeps on giving. There's a mode that's like STS Ascensions, which gets plenty difficult. There's challenge fights, there's an RPG-ish mode with skill ups. They've really explored a lot of variety on the core formula. Now after reading that review, I still believe that the game is a little bit mid. It's not too amazing, but since the reviews are pretty positive, if the game ever does go on sale, I would probably give it a try. It's definitely not worth the price of $14.99 in my eyes, although I don't play these types of games, so maybe for other people it might be, and $14.99 or $15 bucks is not really that expensive to be honest, it is an indie game. Uh, but if it was $10 or less, I'd probably pick it up and give it a shot. Next we have their other game, which I think is their newest game before Power World has released. I could be wrong, but I'm from what I can remember, I'm pretty sure that this was their second to last game to come out as of uh, recently. Uh, next we have AI Art Imposter. The description of this game says that AI Art Imposter is an AI drawing party game for three to eight players. You're a progressive artist who commands AI to generate images, and you don't need aesthetic talent to draw good artwork. It only takes five minutes to play and multiplayer between, uh, oh, it only takes five minutes to play, and multiplayer between Steam, Android, and iOS is supported. And you can probably tell by taking a look at the game that it's trying to kind of capitalize off of the Among Us trend, although this doesn't really have to do with Among Us. It's, uh, I, there's another game that is similar to this. Uh, I, I don't want to say Jack in the Box because I think that plays differently, but I know there is another game that I've seen other YouTubers and content creators play where you have to draw an image and then guess the image. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the game. I haven't played it myself, but from, I know there is a game that exists like that and I just don't know, understand why you wouldn't play that game instead of AI or Imposter because with how AI works, I don't know. Let's let's get into the reviews here, though, because they're pretty mixed by the looks of it, and it doesn't seem like people really enjoy the game too much, but hey, at least they're not negative. So as I said, the reviews for this game are currently mixed, and they're sitting at about 67% as, as of the time of writing the script. For me, I think the top negative review sums up the game pretty well, to be honest with you. The person says, 
The game has a lot of potential and can be very fun at times, but it also suffers from many bugs and errors that ruin the experience. The gameplay is engaging, but the game crashes frequently. The developer should fix these issues as soon as possible to make the game more enjoyable. And that, that's pretty fair to be honest. It can be fun at times to an extent, suffers from bugs and errors, but, you know, other than that, it's not too bad. Although, I, can I see them going back and fixing this game with the huge success of Power World? I don't know. Uh, but by the looks of it, with how their other game, that uh, weird card game, turned out, Over Dungeon, that's the name, uh, with how that game turned out, I can't say that I can't see them going back and fixing this game, but with the way it stands right now, and this negative review being posted May 23rd of 2023, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's better than it actually is, but who knows. Now we're moving on to Craftopia. Craftopia is the brand new multiplayer survival action game made in Japan. We combined many features we find enjoyable, such as hunting, farming, hack and slash, building, automation, to develop this game. Wait, what? Did I read that right? Wait, such as hunting, farming, hack and slash, building, automation, to develop this game. Huh? What? That's what the description says. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe I'm just saying it wrong. Whatever. Well, I guess while I'm at it, I'll read you the top rated review, which happens to be negative. A lot of these v reviews for the game, as of recently, happen to be negative uh, because overall, the, the reviews, well, it, the game's in a pretty rough place. The overall reviews are sitting at mostly positive at, 80, at 78%, but recent reviews are sitting at a mixed 55%, and... Personally, I don't think the game looks that bad, but reading the reviews here, uh, it paints it in a different light. I'll read the top review, which, like I said before, happens to be a negative review for you right now. For a game that's been in early access for three years, this is extremely disappointing. So many issues plague this game beyond just bugs that it makes it impossible to actually enjoy the gameplay or the world as you'll have frustrating, broken, or unpolished mechanics to struggle against and massive amounts of empty item descriptions. Oh, that's rough. Everything from combat to menu navigation to crafting feels extremely clunky and awkward. Quests and story just feel thrown on. NPC dialogue is... Well, I'm sure localization is a different beast, but it would be... It would... Oh my god. But it would at least be nice to have all the item descriptions. I think the devs need to take a step back and look at their game with fresh eyes. As if they were brand new players that didn't understand any, any of the mechanics. So that they can play it and see... Uh, that while they made a decently interesting world with mechanics that sound good on paper, the game experience itself isn't very fun and should be polished rather than expanding on the game, which is only going to make retroactively localized. Wow, oh my god, I'm losing it. <laughs> which is only going to make retroactively localizing and balancing the game an absolute nightmare. Sorry, I just cannot recommend this game in its current state. Good luck. I really do hope something great comes from this game. And this review was uh, written fairly recently, maybe not even a month ago, December 28th, 2023. And uh, yeah, that's pretty fair to say about the game. I actually had this game on my wish list for a little bit. And then after looking at the reviews again and seeing reviews basically saying the same thing that this person did, I removed it from my wish list. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know if the game is currently getting updates. I would assume it is getting small updates, but like I said before with uh, the AI art game, with the release of Power World, to me, Power World is just Craftopia, but new. Like, I, to me, when I think of Craft, like, Power World, I'm like, this, this seems like they just ripped a bunch of uh, the automation and stuff, like I said before with the crafting. It's just like, hey, let's take Craftopia and make, uh, add Pokemon to it. So I, again... I would be surprised if Craftopia just doesn't uh, doesn't get any updates from now on and kind of just sits at the snack stagnant part where it's very mixed and most people don't really enjoy it too much. You know, it could have been something better and it turns out it's not. So if you're going to buy Craftopia, we're thinking about it. Uh, one, I would say just get Pow World. And two, if you don't want to get Pow World and you do want a survival automation game, there are plenty of other games on Steam that I would probably highly recommend and that is one of the reasons why I never got Craftopia even though I've had it on my wish list just because I look at it and I see the reviews are like hey it's not bad but it's pretty rough to an extent very grindy and whatnot so you know there's other options I mean there are so many survival craft but isn't there a genre survival craft games like out there to begin with so uh yeah sadly it's not in a good spot Still, I don't think the game looks that bad. The price is sitting at four twenty four ninety nine. 
Uh, I would possibly contemplate picking it up for $10 or less. Although with the release of Pal World and the current state, like I said before, Craftopia is a hard pass for me. Yet again, I feel the top review sums it up. Uh, sums up the game pretty well, and before I before I read this, I would like to say that the reason why I'm reading the reviews for these games instead of giving you my opinion is because I haven't played any of the games myself, so I feel reading the reviews of these games is far more meaningful than just giving you an opinion on a game that I don't even own, if that makes uh, sense to you. Hopefully it does. Hopefully I don't get too much hate for not actually giving an opinion on the game, because... I would rather not give an opinion, or my own opinion, on something that I've never even played and something that I just kind of looked at. Finally, we can jump into Power World if you skipped the intro, and if you should be landing here, I'm going to start the uh, kind of review talk about Power World. No, I'm not really, I'm going to go off script here and give you my current thoughts on it. The world is fairly large, to be honest, and it, I don't want to say it takes a long time to traverse, but it's... It feels bigger than maybe it looks. Like, I don't know, the world is, uh, it's pretty large. The map's pretty large, and it looks kind of empty. I've been watching Moist Critical, aka Penguin Zero, aka Charlie, play the game, and uh, he originally talked about in the beginning that the world felt really empty, and to an extent, I kind of agreed with that, but the more I explored the world and w went and did things, the more I felt like it was, uh, I don't want to say justified, because they can easily do more stuff, but it didn't... It's not as empty as you would think it is, at, at least when you're starting off. When you're starting off the game and running around, it feels a little bit empty. But once you get going, it, they're at, you realize that you can actually get to certain parts fairly easily. There's bosses and then raid bosses and then like these mini raid bosses. How do I explain that? Well, there's actual bosses that have trainers. So if you think of a uh, Pokemon in a way, there's, you know, you, you fight a trainer at a gym or whatever. And one of the first uh, bosses you fight, I don't want to say first boss, but one of the first trainers you fight pretty early on in the game. And she's got this, like, you know, electric pal. I love gameplay of it in the background, I might as well. And it's, uh, so that's, like, one of the main bosses, I would consider it. And then they have these areas where you go on and you teleport into the dungeon and there's another boss, like, uh, pal there. And then they have other mini bosses that are just scattered around the world where you don't have to teleport into a dungeon. They're just flying around the world like a normal pal, except they're much bigger and they have more health and they're like just a higher level. And I kind of like that. And it's, they actually filled up the world pretty well. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that uh, it's not as empty as you might think it is, because in the beginning, I kind of felt like uh, maybe it was a little empty, but as it stands right now, I'm I think I just hit level 30 in the game. I might not, uh, I'm pretty sure I am level 30. I could be wrong. I think I just hit level 30, uh, as of last time I played the game. And I've, I've been exploring the map way more. I've been going out there and trying to explore all of the crevices, you know, fill out my entire map because a lot of it is blank and like blacked out. After exploring the map a bunch, I realized that they did a really good job at keeping the map full. You know, like, it's, there's not a huge section of the map that is blank. There is, to an extent, there's a top left area where there's no mini bosses or bosses at all. There's just, like, two teleport stations, and it's just a huge wide open land. I'll show it on screen here. It's very odd. I don't know why there's just a huge empty gap here. Maybe I'm missing something, because again, it's an explored area, as you can see on my map, I have explored it, it would be blacked out if it wasn't, but it's just, it's very odd that there's nothing there. Maybe there's some hidden stuff there that I just uh, haven't noticed, maybe it's because I actually haven't fully explored the area, possibly, and I just haven't ran into it. Again, it's not like there's nothing on that those parts of the map. There's a little de there's little lift monk eff effigies. I think that's how you pronounce it as a lift monk. Oh, I just had to stop mid sentence because my mom calls me and she's like, "Oh, the Best Buy is gonna drop off a fridge now. Just go in the living room and wait, just in case you have to sign for it." So I'm sitting out there 20 plus minutes and they never show up. They never show up. It's, it was a whole 30 minutes, maybe even longer than that, that I'm sitting out there waiting for them to show up just in case I have to sign something, and then. Boom, my dad pulls up from work, and I'm just like, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for wasting my time for sitting out there. God damn it. I don't even know what I was talking I was talking about the lift monks. Anyway, uh, the lift monk FEG is... Hold up, I wrote something on the script here. Uh, but they're, scra they're scattered around the map. I don't even need to look at the script. They're scattered around the map. Or is it the left monk effigy things increase your pal capture rate and are scattered and hidden all over the map for you to find. Pal World really is one of those games you can play for like four hours straight, get bored, and then immediately after getting off, go, well, I guess I'll play Pal World again. 
or at least it's like that for me. Surprisingly, it really feels like there's always something to do, whether it's gathering resources, fighting bosses, mini bosses, or raid bosses, or whatever, or just capturing pals uh, to use a slave labor. Something else that I want to bring up as I was browsing some internet posts, I've seen as of recently, you know, when the game first came out, I saw a bunch of people being like, oh, this game is really fun. And people asking if they should buy the game. And then all of a sudden, as of today, I'm seeing people shit on Power World saying that it's uh, not that good and it's horribly buggy and all of this. I actually saw a 4chan post. So let me read this 4chan post here because uh, I at first I didn't even know if the person was talking about Power World, but they are. And I think it's horribly stupid and it's... I, I've seen a lot of people say that, oh, here come all the Pokemon uh, dick suckers coming out of the woodwork to defend Pokemon, even though the game's kind of been shit over the years. And honestly, I've, from what I've heard, again, I haven't really played any of them or seen too much about recent Pokemon games. I've really only played the uh, ones with the sprites, the 8-bit, the older ones. But uh, from what I've heard, the new Pokemon games are ass. They're not good, copy and pasted, as at least the 3D ones. They're, they're, uh, most of them are just pretty rough. And uh, right here, let's read this 4chan post, all right? Why are Pokemon and Nintendo fans butt-hurting over Power World? Spend $90 for the same turn-based JRPG slop every two years, now with an uh, egre- uh, My bad, sorry, I didn't even know how to pronounce that. Now with an egregious lack of polish. New 3D title that costs less than half of that appears out of nowhere and has the blueprints of the type of Pokemon battles we wanted all along. And for the kicker, runs better despite being uh, Unreal Engine 5 Slime. I don't know what that means. Unreal Engine 5 Slime, that feels like somebody's just hitting on Unreal Engine 5 for no reason, even though there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, because beneath the arc ripoff lies the thing that we've wanted for decades. Which I think is funny, because I... Don't know if I said that previously, but in one of my live recordings, I actually say that uh, the technology tree in Power World feels exactly like Ark, very much like Ark, and the building feels somewhat similar to Ark with how it works, uh, the base building, like building platforms and stuff, and I don't mind that. I actually like Ark's building and crafting, so, and the technology tree I think is fun. And Ark's not the only game to do it, but it was the first game for me that I played where it had a technology tree that looked like that and scaled with levels and stuff. Uh, but then the other reply to that, uh, 4chan post, the person, and this is, this does kind of bother me. He said, well, eh, bother me, I mean, I'll get it, I'll talk about it. Friends tell me, uh, friend tells me it's actually good. I know it isn't, but I check it out, yeah, I, but I check out his gameplay. Non-stop rubber banding from everyone on the server. Enemies clipping into the world everywhere, usually out of reach and especially in dungeons. Tons of random bugs happening anytime he does anything that isn't the incredibly boring inventory management at his base. Every single thing is uninspired except some of the Pokemon have cool designs. I don't know what the fuck, uh, I don't know what the hell phenomenon is going on here, but the game fucking sucks. The devs are trash, and I can't believe people proudly give these retards money when all this board does is cry about shitty developers. The, there, there was no universe an open world survival crafting early access game could ever, ever be good. And to that I say, Ark is actually pretty good. Uh, the multiplayer I know was ass, but like the, the with how that works. But like Ark's pretty good. The Forest I think is one of those. There's there's actually quite a few uh, survival craft games, and you know a lot of people will shit on survival craft games, and a lot of them are do get stuck in early access hell and you know die. But that's because there are so many survival craft games made. It's a huge genre, hugely popular game dev genre, and there are a lot of survival craft games i play a lot of survival craft games because i enjoy them that are actually fairly decent but again you're gonna hear the dog barking sorry about that but again i think this person is completely wrong and i feel like it's somebody who hasn't actually played the game they just watch their friend play it uh i've been playing the game solo on my own private server offline with just myself and bug wise i haven't really ran into many bugs i've ran into one bug where one of my pals that was working at my base got stuck in a wall with that i uh i just gr picked up the pal and after picking up the pal like i walked up to the wall that it was stuck inside of pressed x to pick up the pal and it just came out of the wall and it was fine i just tossed it on the ground and it was fine other than that i haven't actually really had any bugs with the game as far as i can remember and i'm not going to say i haven't had any bugs but all of the bugs that i have had are minor and i say that because i don't even remember them they're not really memorable enough for me to be like wow that was really broken and like the one i just said that was the most 
broken bug I've experienced so far. Again, I, I you know, this isn't, uh, I could easily see the game, you know, having some lag issues if you're playing in a public server with a bunch of people on it. As I said, I've been watching uh, Penguin Zero's YouTube videos and some of his streams playing the game, and he plays with, uh, I think, two other uh, of his friends in a, a direct server or some kind of a, it's, it's not a public server, but it's a private server with that they all play in. There, there was a couple lag problems here and there, but like other than that, by the looks of it, unless I'm, unless the YouTube videos that I'm watching just cut it out, but uh, I don't really see any bugs. I haven't seen them have any problems with the game either, for the most part. Uh, the bug, the game's gonna have glitches and stuff and a couple smaller bugs, but like, you know, this guy's saying that the game is literally unplayable. Uh, enemies clipping into the world everywhere, usually out of reach and especially in dungeons. Uh, I've actually never had that problem once. Uh, I've, I've never gone into a dungeon, because uh, I've been in a couple of dungeons already in boss arenas. I've never had a boss arena break. I've never had a dungeon. Uh, I've never had any of the enemies in dungeons break. So uh, that is something that I've never experienced, and maybe it's rare. Maybe it is rare for that to happen. He also says, Tums of random bugs happening anytime he does anything that isn't directly, that isn't the incredibly boring inventory management at his base. It's funny because I, uh, the inventory management isn't that difficult. There really isn't any inventory management because your pals manage your inventory for you. Your, uh, you, when you put pals at your base for the slave labor part to have them work, basically, some pal, like every pal ha can have its own thing that it does. Like some of them are good at farming, some of them at this and that. And s there are certain pals that, will literally, if they have the trait, will go over and pick up items and put them in chests for you. There really isn't that much inventory management, and it's not that annoying. Like, as somebody who does a lot of inventory management, there's very minimal inventory management in the game. To begin with, to be completely honest with you, you know, you could easily... But I don't even know what that means, inventory management. You just take items out of one chest and put them in another like I don't there's not really it's not that difficult to manage your inventories it's not like you have to drag and click I play on a controller by the way you know this is coming from somebody who's exclusively playing on control really quickly I'd finished my commentary but I was listening back to this part and I'd like to add in a bit of uh some more of this because I wish I said in my opinion a lot of the time for at least the inventory management because again that's mostly opinionated some people might not like it some people might like it but you can probably tell from the gameplay in the background, I am I am using cheats, and I say that later on, but one of the cheats I'm using is infinite backpack. Uh, not storage, but uh, there's a weight limit to items. Items have a weight limit. And in my live commentary, I bring it up, and I don't actually bring it up in this dub, but I'm going to bring it up now. I want to bring this up, and I'm glad I remembered and I was listening back to this because uh, something that I feel like this game could do without is the weight. Uh, everything in the game has a weight, like, obviously, you know, stone and wood is going to weigh the most. Certain items are going to weigh more. But I, I hate the weight management. I think th that's what I understand with the inventory management. Because uh, you only have a certain amount of slots in your backpack to begin with. So you have, like, 30 slots in your backpack that can fit stuff. But the weight is really annoying. Now, I'm playing with cheats on, and I have it, so my weight is always at zero. Obviously, you don't have to play with that. You could choose whatever if you want to. But you can't change that in the settings, which bothers me. Like, you can make it so you don't have to eat any food. Like, you could turn it down to point 0.1, so you barely lose uh, hunger. Or your stamina, you can put that to point 0.1, so you barely lose stamina when doing stuff. And you could make the excuse of, well, they don't want you to uh, be able to change your weight because it's a skill that you can put upgrades in. But stamina is also a skill you can put upgrades in. It's weird uh, how that works. That they, I wish they had an option so they could just make it so items are weightless. And again, I feel like having uh, a weight to an items, uh, like a weighed down aspect of the game, I feel like they can completely do without it. At least to me. Because again, with the fact that it's not like your inventory space is infinite. It's not like you can just carry an infinite amount of items. You have a set amount of slots for items. So once those slots are filled up, you can't carry more than that, you know, weight limit or not. Like I have infinite weight on and my inventory will still be full because you have a certain amount of slots to put stuff in. Again, with the way the game works, I feel like the, the weight limit's useless. Uh, maybe it has to do with like helping prevent crashes or something but again i've had no problems and like my weight limit is well above you know the max obviously i haven't mod like cheated it but again i feel like the weight limit is useless and i can understand to an extent if you have the weight limit on and you're not upgrading your weight you do have to manage that aspect of it it's like oh crap i have to make sure i don't have too much wood on me or or this item you got to manage your weight which is a bit annoying but minus the weight you're still going to have to manage your inventory because you only have so many slots and again it's not difficult to manage maybe it's far more difficult if you 
that uh, aren't like me and you know not using a zero weight cheat or whatever or you, or you have it so you could uh no weight limit i feel like that wouldn't really change anything i haven't seen anybody else complain about it maybe it is a bigger issue but again i feel like this is just a a pet peeve for somebody i don't think there's anything wrong with that i've seen so many people complain about inventory management in other games and hey to, to his their own maybe maybe they're seeing something that i'm not i don't know anyway let's get back into the commentary with the controller stuff that i was talking about and again as somebody who's playing on controller you would expect me to have more problems or with inventory management and stuff like that compared to somebody on uh, keyboard and mouse but I, I guess now that i'm bringing up controller i'd like to say that controller is phenomenal i, I mean it's it's mapped perfectly i i don't have any problems with the buttons with how stuff is mapped out i mean it it just works it, it's it's funny with uh, how much is going on because again like a game like arc survival evolved I don't even know if you can connect a controller for it on PC. I'm assuming you can, and I know the game is on a console, but like Ark wouldn't really feel correct playing it on keyboard and mouse. I think I have played it on controller and it felt a bit weird with building and some and some stuff, but uh, it, Pal World is a very casual take on the survival craft to an extent. Like it feels, it feels easily accessible. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's not, you know, you don't need a hundred thousand buttons to do stuff. Like I said, it works perfectly fine on controller. I've had no problems with this game. I don't know what this person is talking about. It just seems like a, a bit of cope on their end. You know, they're just mad that there's a game that people are enjoying with their time. This this really reminds me of, uh, I'm going to bring up a game, Valheim. You know, I think everybody's played Valheim or seen it, and it's an amazing game. And I actually uh, bought Valheim way before the hype, way before the game blew up and got, you know, millions, millions of downloads. It was... Around its first release, when it first dropped on Steam, I had bought the game and got my friends into it. As somebody was there from the beginning, I really enjoyed it. And I, again, Valheim's a completely different game. It was a fully complete game, I'm pretty sure. I, I might have dropped in early access, but it was a fully released game. Very well made. Obviously, you know, with the company's two different types of developers and stuff with how things go. But uh, as it stands with Pow World, uh, I think it's very good, and I saw some other people, you know, commenting, saying stuff like, oh, it's one of those games that give it a month and everybody's going to be like, it was actually trash, it was actually trash, and I'm going to be honest, uh, I've been playing the game a lot. Within a month, I'm assuming that I'm probably going to be playing it less because I will probably be max level and have most of the stuff done. Uh, I will be surprised if I'm a month out from now. I'm still playing the game as much as I am now. I would I would be happy if that's the case, but uh, you know, it, and I have again, I'm I have my server set up in a custom way, so I gain more XP than normal. Uh, you can customize the server settings and change a bunch of sliders, so I gain more XP than normal. I'm able to capture pals lightly. I have it slightly increased and in like egg incubation. So like again, if you're playing the game just on normal settings, uh, you're going to be hard capped into waiting. So there's the egg incubation. And usually, uh, the multiplier that it's on, the normal standard multiplier, it will take, like, sometimes 36 hours for something to fully incubate, like an egg to fully incubate. And I don't really like that as somebody who's playing solo, doesn't play online. Uh, so I turned it down so the egg incubation is just instant. Sadly, there's no, you can't input your own custom numbers for, uh tuning stuff and the in the uh, world customizer so say you want the egg incubation time to be 0.5 uh like half like it, you want it to take half the time it normally would you can't do that it's only what the slider allows sadly but uh, again the game is still really fun and as somebody who has customized my world and has certain stuff increased uh, to a little bit higher so i don't have to grind and wait with uh, timing as much i'm still playing the game a crap ton i'm still having a lot of fun with the game i think there's a lot of enjoyment to ha have out of the game it is not a very buggy maybe i'm just lucky again i was one of those people uh when i bought i bought cyberpunk 2077 the day it released i actually pre-ordered it a, 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 a day before it released and i played it the night of release and guess what i had no bugs with the game i had no problems with the game i don't know if i ran into a single you know i might have ran into a couple minor small bugs but nothing that I even remember, you know, thinking back to it, it, it was a flawless game for me. And I know that is completely uh, rare because in, in the Discord call that I was in with my two other friends playing the game, my one friend had to restart the entire game because his save was broken uh, because of a gun wouldn't load in. So he couldn't actually, he could literally couldn't complete like the beginning tutorial mission. He had to completely start a new save, reloading, it didn't fix anything. Luckily, he wasn't that far into the game, not even an hour, but still, I know the game had problems, but maybe this is just lucky for me, but, you know, as I said, watching 
Penguin Zero Play, he doesn't really have any problems. The biggest problem he had was a hacker joined his lobby and, you know, gave him a bunch of stuff and changed a bunch of stuff. But other than that, it didn't really break the game. And yeah, you can cheat for the game. Uh, I don't think the game has an anti-cheat. So if you're going to play in a public server, you know, be wary of that uh, with cheaters and stuff. But again, I, like I, I with, with the game, the way the game looks, I don't know if you can actually fight other players. I think PvP is an option that can be enabled. But to me, it's one of those games that, at least for me, I would play it with PvP off. I would just interact with the AI around the world, like you would with an actual Pokemon game. You know, for the most part, you just play it solo, have fun, maybe play it with a couple of friends. But uh, I've had a lot of fun with Pal World. I, there's there's not really uh, much else to say about it. Again, the world is f full. There's a lot to do. Uh, there's with the, with the emptiness of the world, it's not really that empty because there's always a mini uh, a raid boss or a mini boss or some kind of uh, special po uh, pal, pal to uh, collect or go to. So the, the world is a bit more filled than it actually seems to be. Again, they could add, like you could add more bases or more intricate stuff here and there. And I would hope that the game does uh, add some more of that stuff. But as it currently stands, for the price point, I think the game is retailing for uh, 25 bucks. Let me go to the store page here while I'm recording this. Right here, the game is actually retailing for $26.99. So it is on sale. Originally, original price is $30, which I don't know how I feel about the game being $30, but as somebody who already has 21 hours played, as of talking right now, I'm, it says right here, 21 hours played, yeah, it, it's it's definitely worth it. It's going to be on sale for another 44 hours, it says, but, uh, you know, $30 isn't a bad price, and, you know, if you could pick up this game 20 bucks, 15 bucks, I would highly recommend it. You know, if you could find the game for under 20, I would definitely recommend it. But uh, 30 bucks isn't too bad of a price. I already have 20 hours in the game. Almost gotten most of my playtime out of it. And I'm not even completed with the game. I have, like I said before, I have my settings changed and I have it so that I have, uh, I get 1.5 to double the amount of normal XP. And I'm still not max level yet. I think the max level is like 50 and I'm only level 30. And again, so if you're playing with the normal settings and you don't really cheat or do any like crazy world tweaking stuff like that, it would take you quite a while to actually progress through the game. It is a bit of a grind. Again, if you're not changing the settings and the world to uh, make stuff slightly faster, like the egg incubation, and uh, you, you don't change the settings to uh, make it so you gather more resources, because you can make it so you uh, when you're gathering resources, you get double the normal amount of resources you would get from chopping down a tree or something, then yeah, it's going to take you slightly longer to uh, play the game. And, and again, that's not a bad thing. You might want to spend more time doing that. It gives you more reason to, you know, grind. and gives you more play time for the game. But for me, I just like to cut out some of that miscellaneous stuff. Again, personal preference, everybody plays the game differently. Uh, but yeah, like you can easily cheat in the game. I, I do. Uh, when I play, I actually use a trainer. I'm going to be transparent about that. I use Wii Mod I, with the game. Uh, if you're using Wiimod, that is a fairly big trainer, and I mean like big as in like Wiimod is a program that has a bunch of other, you know, trainers in it, but uh, this is going to sound like an ad. It's not an ad. I'm not supported by Wiimod or anything. Wiimod doesn't allow you to play online. You have to be in an offline server. So again, if you're using Wiimod to, uh, as a cheat engine trainer for the game, then it won't even let you play in an online server. But again, it's, I don't think the game has an anti-cheat, so you can fairly easily down download cheat engine or download a trainer or some kind of a cheating hacking tool and just cheat the game if you want uh i wouldn't suggest it because there's no reason to if you're going to join a public server and do that it's kind of dumb you know it's like don't do that i wouldn't suggest doing that it's not really gonna there's not a point I don't, I don't know what else to say uh but again yeah try out the game it's definitely worth it at least with it being on sale uh as of right now the price isn't that steep and I've been having a lot of fun with the game, to be honest. I mean, I probably have gameplay in the background here. But again, like, will the game get boring? Possibly. You're going to get to a point where you're going to hit max level and hit end game. As it currently stands, you know, the game just released. It's only been out for like four or five days, uh, not even like four days. So, of course, you're going to hit a point where you're going to, uh, you know, get to end game. And there's not going to be much to do. You're going to have most of the stuff done, possibly. And that's fine. Like, you're the game just released. There's going to be an end game. Every game has an end game. Cyberpunk has an end game. A lot of games have an end game. Hope, I hope the game can consistently gets updated. Apparently, I read that the game just surpassed 6 million sales, which is crazy. One of the most played games on Steam currently, and I don't blame it. It's actually really fun. I mean, it's better than most AAA games that have released recently, so that says a lot. I wouldn't consider it the best indie game to have released recently. There's a ton of amazing indie games out there. Uh, compared to actual AAA games, it is really amazing, and apparently there are mods for the game, I 
think, from what I've seen. So you can mod the game. So I'm excited to see what mods can add because, you know, mods add an infinite amount of replayability to games. So even if the game lacks in the update department with uh, new content being added by the developer, you can always, to an extent, rely on mods. As much as I hate that, you know, with... You know, compare it to Fallout or Skyrim or, or with Bethesda games where it's like, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, Bethesda games suck, but you can always mod them. You should still have a core game that's still there. And as it currently stands, I think Power World works perfectly fine. You know, maybe public servers uh, that have a large amount of people playing on them do run poorly and stuff. And again, person on 4chan was complaining about in buggy and, and rubber banding. Uh, it's hosted off of somebody's computer. So if you were the host of a lobby and you have a weak computer, and a bunch of your friends join and you're mining a bunch of stuff like the game's gonna suffer because your computer can't handle it so just keep that in mind it's based off of your computer it's not like some public server on uh the dev it's not like a dev server at, like that the studio owns it's your so you just got to keep that in mind and as it stands i'm my, my pc i have 64 gigs of ram uh i have a rtx 3080 uh, ryzen 9 950 5900x and my game's running fine i'm running the game off of a hard drive not even an ssd i'm running the game off of a hard drive and i'm not really having any problems with the game as it stands again the more people you have in your lobby it's gonna add more uh pull to the fire i guess or it's gonna you know take more load on your computer but other than all of that uh, I, is there anything else for me to talk about i don't think there is if i if i could think of something i'll add it in here well here i am adding it in here I can't believe I forgot to bring this up throughout the entire video, but that's the fact that you can upgrade your base. This is, uh, it's not extremely Im important, to be honest, to the overall review of the game or the video, but it just is something that I, when I jumped on the game again, I was like, oh, maybe I should have brought that up in the video. And it's the fact that you can level up your base, so you always have, like, a consistent thing that you can do. Uh, you always have, like, an immediate objective, basically. And what you do is you go to your PAL box here uh, with some footage on screen and you go over to that and you, you have an objective and you have to complete these objectives, which is usually just building something. So it'd be like uh, build a workbench and uh, have five PALs working at the base at a time or something like that. And then when you do that, it will be checked marked up or off and then you can upgrade your base. And what upgrading your base does is actually allows you to have more PALs working at a time on your base. Now, there is a setting in the world settings to, uh, man to manage or change how many PALs you can actually have actively working at your base, and it caps at 20, which doesn't really seem like that much. Like 20 PALs is a lot to have 20 PALs working at a time. But uh, obviously this is like, becomes way more of a problem if you're not playing solo and you have multiple people in your server because you change that to 20 and three people that's already 60 pals working at once doing multiple different things so obviously you know having being able to change that is fine but i have it set to 20 which is the max i've been fine that's just another thing that i felt like i should bring up uh it's a kind of important part of the game because it allows you to upgrade your base but it's it's not super super important you know if like you want to play the game that's like a plus but uh you know that that's just there i, I just wanted to bring that up just so uh I, you know just so you know good evening so i just want to add this part in because it's a little bit of a pet peeve right now it's a bit of a glitch uh i want to bring up that you can actually glitch bosses i was watching penguin zero's video uh on pokemon with guns has uh has a weird bug or whatever the hell the title is and you can push bosses out of arenas it's possible to do that which i didn't know of and there's also a glitch to like capture bosses but that's more of like a glitch you have to go out of your way to do but uh this is in a bit of an annoying bug that i've recently discovered it's the wooden gate the wooden gate so uh as you can see, it's open, and I usually leave this gate open because my pals will get, like, stuck outside the gate sometimes and starve to death or some shit, uh, but basically, last time I was on the world, I left the gate open, I saved and exited, and then I reloaded into the world, and I play offline, maybe online has something else to do with it, but my world is completely offline, I've been playing it offline, and as you can see... Uh, it says to close the gate, so the game registers that it's open, but if I walk forward... I can't walk through it. Uh, this has happened multiple times, and the game sees the gate as closed. And I know this because I was recently raided uh, last time this had happened, where it had this little bug where I can't walk through the gate. The game thinks it's closed uh, because I was getting raided, and none of the mobs and none of my 
the pals were actually walking out of the gate. And I can literally, literally cl <laughs> climb it. Uh, call me Spider-Man. Spider-Man without the walls. Yeah, this is different. Uh, obviously, you just fix it. You close the gate. You open it back up. Oh, wow. Fixed. Um, so I guess the game just resets how gates work specifically. I don't know if it does that with doors. I haven't tried it because I don't really use doors. As you can see, this tree is taking damage because uh, if you leave enough gaps, or I guess if there's enough distance, your pals will actually mine through the gates. I don't know if they do that with walls, but they will do it with the gates here. So uh, somebody's mining this. I don't know where they're at. Oh, there they are. So yeah, that, that lift monk is mining that tree or chopping it down. So this guy right here, as you can see, logging, or our lift monk, is logging that tree from this distance. So that's a bit of a bit of a wonky thing there. Uh, they're they're only doing that because my the circle for my base is right here. So you know they're uh, they're able to hit that. But yeah, it's a bit weird. I mean, it's not really super game breaking. That's not like a horrible, you know, I got to refund the game now type deal. It's different i mean at least he's not outside trapped outside the base glitched outside the base i mean i will bring this up because i didn't before and i feel like it would be uh it would be dishonest for me to say this but you know after playing the game for a decent amount more uh it, it, the game does have some bugs and i don't want and it's not really doesn't have super crazy glaring issues again i've been playing the game solo so most of the uh game breaking bugs i probably haven't really experienced that you might experience when playing with players like i said be, with being able to literally push uh braid bosses and stuff out of the map and again it's not like i haven't run into bugs i've run into bugs myself but overall the game hey the game's not as broken as cyberpunk was on release so i'll give it that overall it's it's fine i don't know i like i said i legitimately haven't had as many problems as other people might have maybe it's just a me specific thing maybe it has to do with the fact that i'm playing solo and not multiplayer who knows but from my stance of it i haven't had any problems if you've had problems with the game let me know in the comments just detail your problems how many players you play with on your server what type of problem happened how it happened this and that i would love to know and you know read the feedback but for now i think the game is in a pretty fun state i will possibly probably uh make an update video later on a few months from now looking back looking on the game seeing where it is if they've updated the game hopefully they add more content to it i'm excited to see where it goes hopefully the devs don't just run away with the money they've made <laughs> because you know it's that they've got a, a lot of players hopefully uh with how many people have bought into the game and how many p players are playing the game they uh, have more reason to actually put time and effort into making updates for the game uh hopefully they don't get sued by nintendo but you already know that's not going to happen or they already know that's probably going to happen uh, apparently somebody who made a pokemon mod uh for pal world is already getting sued that's rough uh hopefully they're able to get away with that uh, i don't know if they're going to be able to because they just took actual pokemon and then modded it into the game so i don't know how that's going to work but uh best to that person pal world very fun. I would recommend it. I'll see you in the next one.